Hey guys, what's going on? Troy at Mountain Man Treasure here, and today, a really nice sale. Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Treasures. Welcome into the channel, guys. My name is Troy. I'm a reseller in Montana. It means I go to places like garage sales in the summer. I buy stuff that people don't want. They just want to get out of their lives and hopefully undervalue. I bring it home. I list it online. I sell it. I make a profit. I do that mostly on eBay. We sold something that we picked up at a garage sale for a dollar for several hundred dollars. Several, several hundred dollars. Let's take a look at the stuff here over on the counter. I'll tell you about it. All right, we'll get started. Over here on the left, we've got a DVD, the Sand of Pebbles collection. Steve McQueen, Richard Attenborough. We got Krenna. We got Candace Bergen. We got Murphy Brown in this thing. This is a pretty good seller, actually. $14.39 plus shipping on that. I paid, I think, a dollar. For that, I like selling DVDs. This, I don't even fully know exactly what this is, if I'm honest. Uh, they're book plates. I don't know. You don't have to know what things are to sell them on eBay. Uh, these are book plates. I think it's a crafting thing. Got these with a lot. And so we're, you know, a quarter into it. I don't know. And so $8.99 free shipping for that. Got a hat. Another thing that I like to sell. This is the Platinum owner's club it's a skidoo or is it skidoo i think i've always said skidoo but it's a uh, skidoo hat and uh, i got an offer of 15 dollars plus shipping and i took that i actually had it listed up closer to i think 20 because they're relatively rare but it has been sitting for probably a year so 15 more than fair at this point got another pin down here this one going out to a viewer trying to turn around so you can see it it's camaro so vintage camaro pin this one going out to kia said you know she's been watching the channel she's been learning a lot and just the other day sold seven items in one day that has been her best day so far so congratulations kia that is fantastic i'm so happy for you and uh, she says this is a birthday gift for her camaro loving husband kia thank you so much. Kia did ask about stickers. I've got to find another sticker dealer. I actually have had somebody reach out and I need to get back to them uh, about maybe doing some stickers. So that might be coming in the future. We, we ran out and so we might be doing some more. This one, really, really good game. I found this on Saturday. You'll see this in a garage sale down the road in a video. And uh, this I actually found on my way out. I'd already paid. As I'm walking out, I do kind of a scan of the table to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I did. I missed this 3DS game sitting there. And it, it looked like one that I thought, hey, this is probably pretty good. You know, it just had that look. And it turned out to be a whole lot better than what I thought it would be. I paid $3 for this thing. And it sold in a couple of days it's going to Canada. $135 is the U.S. equivalent there. $175.19, I think it was, Canadian. So $135. Bucks. These things sell routinely. They have a very happy place in the sold comps of $115 plus shipping, like $114.99. That's what they sell at all the time. And the sell-through rate is ridiculous. So if you find this thing, it's a $100 bill. Now, this is complete. That is going to be part of it. We've, of course, got the case. We've got the game, and we've got the little instruction manual in there. So even if you find just the game cartridge, it's certainly going to sell well. We've got for the PlayStation 2 Black Label Soul Calibur 3. I just listed this maybe a week ago, something like that. $9.98 plus shipping. Another really good game here for the Sega CD Mortal Kombat. It's a fantastic selling title. And this one's going international, guys. This one, part of a big video game buy that I made, and the, the case is even broken, right? And of course, I note that in the listing. So this is not top dollar, but still really good money. $54.60 plus international shipping. This one is headed out to Switzerland. I've only sold a couple of things there in the past, so that's pretty cool to send something up to Switzerland for $54.60 plus that international shipping. And this... 
This is our winner, guys. Actually, let's head on back over to my table, and we'll talk about it. So here it is, guys. Here it is, this thing. We paid a dollar, and this is one that I'd not found before, the, the label. You guys all know what the typical Carhartt label looks like, and Carhartt sells very well. It's a great brand to resell. It holds value. And so when I saw this, I thought, you know what? I haven't seen that label before. It's probably older, probably worth picking up. But I really didn't know. I thought, you know, a lot of times you pick up jackets like this, more modern jackets, and you can sell them for $100, $150 sometimes for Carhartt work jackets. And so it was worth picking up for a buck, worth taking a shot on, right? Here is the label, and we've talked about it in a video before, but for those of you that, that didn't see that video, this is the label. And this is called pretty commonly the heart label, right? Because there's the shape of a heart. And so you've got Carhartt. It's union made. I did some research into the label, and it looks like they were using that for the most part in the 1940s, into the 1950s. This thing is old, guys. And it's got... I washed it, right? I, I wanted to get it clean-ish. At least as clean as you could get it, right? Look at the sleeve here. There's stains on the sleeve okay not just there i mean there's stains all over the place the ends are ratty right i mean it, this is not by just general definition a jacket that's in good shape right it, it's just not but it's carhartt it's old it's blanket lined okay and that lining that's super cool so that adds to the value as well so there are a lot of things going for this jacket Something else that's going for this jacket is that it's really rare. When I got home, when I started researching it, and it wasn't something I did right away, I actually looked at the other stuff first because I just didn't imagine that it was worth as much as it was. When I started digging into it, and I realized the age and that sort of thing, I got online, I looked. On eBay, there was one listed that was this same design, blanket lined, brown, that sort of thing. It's listed at $2,500. Yeah, crazy, right? And so it, that's what it's listed at. That's not what it has sold at. There were no solds in the last 90 days, but I did find a hood that would have attached back here on the snaps. There's a little hood that goes on there. It sold for $100, a little over $100. And so if a hood is going to sell for 100 bucks, surely a jacket is worth something, right? So I got on WorthPoint and started digging around. WorthPoint, sometimes it's very picky about the words. It's not like eBay where it says, well, here's some that are sort of like what you punched in. You, you have to get the right stuff. And so I had to punch in different combinations of stuff. And there really only were a couple that I could find on WorthPoint. There were some coveralls that had the same label. They sold for, I think, $650. Uh, there were a couple of hoods that sold. I did find one jacket just like this. It had somebody's name written across the breast pocket. It sold for, it was like $150, $200, something like that. And so I thought, you know, writing on it and it still sold, it's certainly good. So what did I do? Well, the guy had it listed at $2,500. I wanted to undercut him because I knew... It, it wasn't worth that much, right? But he had the only one, so he was shooting for the moon. And that's what you do when you have something that's rare that clearly has a sales history, even though it doesn't show up very often when it does, it sells. Nobody else has one. Put it up high, enable offers, see what happens, right? You, you sell it too low, you can't get that money back. You list it high, you can gradually bring that price down. Or somebody might just come along, see that price and go, yeah, but theirs is the only one and hit the button right? So listing high, enabling offers, waiting, and just seeing what happens. That's my recommendation on stuff like that. My assumption is that's what that guy's doing. Well, I could undercut him and still shoot for the moon, right? So I put mine up at about $1,900, far more than what my research says that it's worth, but we have the only two available. And the thinking is that they see his and they go, wow, this one's $500 cheaper. It looks like it's in about the same condition. And you wait and see, right? You don't know what's going to happen. Well, it sat for a little while. This did not sit for a long time. I found this this summer, you know, a month and a half ago, something like that. Um, it, it, it didn't last very long, frankly, until somebody came along and I got an offer 
of $750, guys. $750. Now, you look at that as a percentage of what I had it listed at, at uh, $1,900. It's, uh, it, it's pretty low, right? But my research, I don't think I ever told you, showed me that that's pretty much the cap. That's, you know, we sold the one for $150. The coveralls for $650. The few jackets that I found like this, barring, you know, the, the one that was written across. That one sold low. I think they just undercut themselves. They, they just priced it too low. The ones that I found, three, I think, something like that, sold no higher than $750. Right in that ballpark. $750 seems to be the going rate for these things when they show up. And so I thought, well, the guy sent me an offer of what it's worth. You know, it's not what I had it listed at, but it's what it it's what it's worth. And I thought, you know what? Mine is only the second available that we got the guy way up there and then there's me. So let's see, right? And so it's a hard decision trying to figure out, do I counter on something like this? Especially when it hit right at market value, you assume that that guy probably knows what the market value is for this. He's, he's a collector of some sort. And so the concern is what if you come back and he goes, no, that's all I'm willing to pay. And he declines and then you're out, right? And then you sit and wait for the next person to come along. Things like this, there are only a handful of people out there that are going to pay that much money for a beaten up stained old jacket. It's not a big market. The market's there. It's not huge. So you have to, you have to weigh it, right? You have to decide what you want to do. Well, I ultimately decided I'm going to counter and I sent back a counter of 899. Now that's basically a thousand dollars off my listing price, right? Uh, but it's not that much higher than what he offered really. And who knows, right? He might go, Oh, okay. And hit it. It went for uh, about half a day and I didn't hear back. And there was a concern of, well, maybe I lost him. You know, maybe I blew it. But really early in the morning, like three, four o'clock in the morning, the, uh, the counter offer came back in at $775. He came up $25. Now that tells me that he wants it. He's willing to pay up a little bit more than he offered, but he only came up $25 on a $900 offer he's not playing around much, right? He's going, yeah, I'll give you a little bit more, but not that much more, right? He's going, this is the ballpark that I want to live in. And so you could counter back at that point, but then you really risk losing him. So I thought about it for a little bit and thought, you know what? That's actually above the market value for these. That's uh, higher than what I would have gotten for it if I priced it right at where the history says it sells. Yeah. We're going to do it. So $1, I sold it for $775 plus shipping. He's, of course, more than $800 in to this jacket. It's headed down to Texas. And I'm thrilled. You know, no, it's not $1,900, right? It, it's not. I never thought that I was going to get $1,900. That's, uh, you know, you're rolling the dice and you think one in a million, somebody might pay that but you don't expect that. And so I didn't lose here at all. You know, I, I got a really good return on a jacket for a dollar that other people passed by. I was not the first person at this sale. And so it just comes down to you knowing what you're looking at. I didn't know that, but I knew enough to pick it up and for a dollar, take a shot, right? It, if I blew it, it's worth nothing. I donate it and I lost a dollar right? So when the price is low and you just have a gut instinct saying, I think that might be something, trust yourself, take a shot. You're not going to be right all the time. You're going to lose here and there, but you could win with a $775 jacket from the 1940s. Guys, I appreciate it. It's a great sale. One of our best sales on eBay, not the best, but up there in the top 10 might be top five actually. And I'm glad that I got to share it with you. So thanks for joining me today, guys. We're going to work on putting a garage sale video together for you tomorrow, maybe even Thursday. We'll, we'll give you some garage sale videos this week. I know a lot of you guys like those. So that's coming up. Until then, we'll see you.